up that morning and you headed out to the airport. Take us through it step by step. Well, you know, once we got to the airport, uh, we parked in the law enforcement parking section, identified ourselves, gave my plate number, my, my man number, and so forth. And then we parked, uh, we being myself and uh, retired sheriff for neighbor Veta, who was my deputy chief at the time. So we got to the airport, and I told uh, Sheriff Rivetta, I said, let's go up to TSA, and let's just make sure we're not going to have any issues with the expiration date on my driver's license. And so we did. We went upstairs, spoke with the TSA supervisor, and I explained that um, my expiration date on my driver's license had expired, wanted to know if it was going to present a problem for me flying uh, or not. And she said that it would not present a problem because it had expired within one year, and so we went downstairs, presented our identification to the ticketing agent. We got our tickets, logged in our luggage, and we were immediately contacted by the airport police. Uh, they demanded to speak with us, wanted to see identification, told us that we were listed as suspicious uh, by TSA. So once okay, contact was made... Let me, let me stop you, Dr. because here we run into a, a, a little bit of a hairball. There's a lot of hairballs in this thing. Okay, so I had understood. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, folks. I know you. You went. I knew you'd gone upstairs and talked to a supervisor, but you didn't discuss with with that person that you had two uh, two IDs. We'll get to that. The two IDs and the, and the, how that came about. But you didn't well, specifically tell that I, person. Not specifically. Uh, I had. Okay. I had a folder in my hands with multiple uh, proofs of identification, and whether they saw. Uh, some of that identification or not, I don't know. Uh, all I know is that I was contacted by. Well, more likely, did you make reservations? Uh, air, air, airplane reservations? Sure. Yes, absolutely. With well, we know now that whenever you when you're making reservations, they're already running your background checks and all kinds of stuff. And when a, when an American citizen makes a reservation, we already know that TSA is running background checks on everybody the minute you make that. So that could have been what, you know, what, what threw a red flag because if they found two and then over and you know, went berserk, you know, I'm, I want to be real fair and real accurate here on what, what could have happened from their point of view and your point of view, be fair to everybody. So, um, but you came downstairs Had you, did they know who you were? You came downstairs. How did they identify you to come over and talk to do you know i do not know uh, i can only assume hmm. that it was you know based on description and video camera surveillance footage etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so it, it could possibly have been from a from a, 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 a bolo or a heads up that came through the computer system bear with me folks <clears throat> a little congested tonight um with a you know a dual id hey check this out or they could have been somebody who actually wanted to mess with somebody. And, well, you're from a very small town, and if you're going to mess with somebody, who do you go for? The easier target. It's kind of two That's ways to possible. look at that from, 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 my, from my point of view. Okay, so you came down, and then you were approached as a, quote, suspicious person. Now let's go on from there. So, you know, we identified ourselves to the officer. I, I presented a driver's license that matched my boarding pass under the name of Shane Harger. I presented my boarding pass. I presented a Social Security card under the name Shane Harger that matched my boarding pass. I presented my law enforcement credentials under Shane Harger, which matched the name on my boarding pass. The officer was sort of set back, uh, even made the statement, you know, well, wait a minute, all, all this matches up. And I said, okay. And he, he pretty much sent us on our way. He said, well, there's a you know, problem here. Go, go ahead. Somebody had listed you as being suspicious, but, you know, you guys are good to go. And he let us go. So we went upstairs to the TSA checkpoint, presented our identification at the checkpoint. Uh, Sheriff Rivetta was allowed to walk through the checkpoint. I was, you know, questioned as to where I was going, and then I was asked what my business was there. I told the TSA agent it was none of their business what I was doing in Las Vegas that was personal. 
and they, they got a little upset with that. And then I moved through the uh, metal detector. I went through three times. Uh, the third time I was allowed to go through, I did not go off the third time. And then I was immediately approached by a man in a dark suit who opened a wallet, flashed some credentials. I wasn't sure what was in his wallet. Didn't get a chance to, to look at it up close and personal. This individual was later identified as a Gilbert, uh, I want to see if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Wahadia, uh, his last name. And uh, this individual demanded to see my ID, stated that I was a person of interest, that I was listed as being suspicious. And at this point, uh, I just said, you know, what's so suspicious about me? I, I don't understand. I've already identified myself. There's no refuting as to who I am. And, you know, I'd like to be free on my way to go. He didn't like that very much. He came, became indignant, uh, was making some inflammatory statements, but ultimately told me that um, he knew people in my district and was going to make some phone calls and uh, that uh, you know he, he was going to live true to his word. I did, since then I have gotten a copy of the videotape, and you can clearly hear this individual, Mr. Gilbert Wahadia, state on the video, you haven't heard the last from me, I, I'm going to make some phone calls. You'll be hearing from me again. And so I went on to the conference. Uh, well, let me back up. Before we got on the plane, we stopped off at a little juice stand there at the airport. Some individual in plain clothes came up and took my photograph. Uh, me and Chair Favetta were sitting there having some juice. Came up and took our photograph and then walked away. I don't know what that was all about. I can only assume that a total stranger taking my picture after an incident like that uh, had something to do with airport surveillance or security. I don't have a way to validate that. That's just my humble yet somewhat accurate opinion. So we get on the plane. We go to Vegas. We attend this conference. It's very educational. Uh, made a lot of contacts there. Learned a lot of things. Once we got back uh, in Albuquerque, I uh, turned on my, my cell phone, took it off of airplane mode, and immediately started getting uh, missed phone call messages, one of which was from the sheriff's office. And I made contact via telephone with um, Lieutenant Vanelli from the sheriff's office who stated uh, he was under direct order from the sheriff to pick up my commission card to the sheriff's office. Uh, he couldn't tell me as to why. He said there was a letter. I asked him to read the letter. Basically what the letter said was due to recent events and concerns over civil liability, my commission card was immediately being revoked. Now, I'm, uh, I'm saying that sort of paraphrasing. I don't have the letter in front of me. But uh, so I, I ended up uh, submitting that. I submitted that commission card to Lieutenant Bonelli. And I was also placed on administrative leave by the, the acting mayor, Pam Grider. The, one of the councilmen, Mr. Uh, Bob Wilson, was present, and Ona Trujillo, who's also our human resources director, was present. I was told that I was being placed on uh, administrative duties is what they were calling it, uh, and that all of my officers were turning all their equipment, badges, guns, tasers, uh, et cetera, uniforms, uh, and I was to inventory all of that stuff. So I questioned as to why I was being placed on any kind of leave, why my department was being disbanded or what have you, and uh, was not provided with any answers. I was told that allegations were made by the sheriff. That's what, that's what I was told. I was told that allegations were made by the sheriff about an incident that took place at the airport. Nothing more. I wasn't giving any specifics. And so it just sort of snowballed from there. The media got a hold of this and started asking questions, and that put... Uh, certain individuals in the hot seat, figuratively speaking. And so since that time, I have been reinstated to full duty, um, yet I don't have a police department. I have no officers working for me. There was a shooting today, a pursuit, came into our district, and uh, we had no officers there whatsoever to, to help tend to this. Thankfully, uh, no one was killed and none of our citizens were injured. But, you know, as a law enforcement officer, we have a duty to protect and uh, I don't know how I can possibly protect my citizens. Uh, I'm, I can't be on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so okay. this today's... Let me take you back 